Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really cool tutorial to show you. It is a crochet dress towel topper, um, either for your kitchen or your bathroom. Today I have this really cute um, Thanksgiving fall towel. I love this tree on it. It really brings out the colors and that's exactly what we're going to be doing with the yarn choice today. So um, I will get into that in just a moment. But thank you for clicking on this video. This is a two-part series. So I have a part one and a part two. Part one is going to be showing you how to crochet the whole piece. Um, the topper piece. I'm also going to show you how to make the button loop so you can loop it around your oven door or wherever you want to hang it in your kitchen or bathroom or whatever. And part two will be showing you how to connect that crocheted piece onto the towel itself. So please be sure to subscribe um, so that you can easily navigate between the videos and obviously if you enjoy my content um, just be sure you're subscribed so you can keep up with all my videos so all right without further ado let's jump into how to make this really cute crochet dress towel topper all right let's go ahead and get started so for this project obviously you're going to need your towel. Um, this is adorable. I don't remember, I think this was like a TJ Maxx or a Home Goods type of towel buy. They have so many of them um, and many different seasons. So this one's going to be fall. And I really liked this, the color that we have going on here with the tree, which is why I chose yellow yarn instead of orange. Um, I suppose burgundy would actually look really cute too. But I wanted to mix it up a bit and bring out that yellow color in the tree. And so that's why um, this is um, from Hobby Lobby. It's the I Love This Cotton yarn. If you guys know me and watch my tutorials, you know that I love this yarn. I also have the same thing in white. And this is cotton. It's a little bit easier if you have to wash the towels. But a lot of people tell me that these towels are so pretty that they don't even use them <laughs> they just hang them up when people come over and they hate wiping their hands on them but anyway so that's what you're going to need is two skeins of either color your accent color the color that you want to bring out and then the color of the base of the towel which is obviously white and that's usually the case for most towels um you're going to need a pair of scissors some yarn needles and a crochet hook. This is a 4.5 millimeter and you're going to need your choice of button. I'm not sure why. There we go. Um, your choice of button. This one I just picked. It's a shank. I like working with shanks with this project instead of your regular, you know, four or two hole buttons. They're just a little easier at the end to, I guess, pull that thing down and um, button it together. But that is your choice, and I just thought that, that kind of br brought out the, I guess, flower gold, like, I don't know. I really like that button. And just want to let you know, I apologize for that, like, water noise in the background. That is my fish tank, so if you hear some liquid, <laughs> that is what's going on. Alright, so you're going to start with your accent color, and in my case, it's yellow. And you're going to make a slip knot. And you're going to chain 44. Okay, I just chained up my 44 stitches and what you're gonna do is attach and slip stitch into the end so you're gonna make sure it's flat you're gonna kind of fold it over and make sure that you're slip stitching so that if you were to continue because we're gonna be continue on I don't know why this is not focusing um, you're gonna continue on to like the next row going this way so you want to make sure that the right side is facing out when you do this. You don't want to have it twisted or anything like that. And you're going to slip stitch them together. 
just like that. So it's one big ring of 44 chains. We're going to chain one. And we're going to work, I'm going to try to work this tail end here along as I go. We're going to work one single crochet in each chain just for one row. And when we get to the end, we're going to slip stitch. So I'm just going in each chain and irritating you guys because this is not focusing. <laughs> I apologize. Alright, so here I am at the end. I just slip stitched to the beginning and we are basically going to finish off with our yellow color for now, or your accent color for now, by just uh, trim it. And I like to pull up the loop through here just to kind of uh, secure that. And basically, the stitch before and right after our stitches. So this one right here and that one right there. Those are two stitches right under the knot. But I'm going to explain that to you again right now because we're going to go in with our white color, our base. I can find the end. Alright, and we're going to pick any stitch to attach our white. I just kind of use my crochet hook to pull it through. And I like to secure by tying a knot. Go back in there and pull up a loop. And chain two. And that counts as a double crochet. Now we're basically going to be doing a row of double crochets all the way around, but we're going to alternate a pattern where we have three, we have one double crochet in three um, stitches, so that chain two counted as one. Here's my second one, and then I'm going to go in and put a third. So the first three stitches are going to have one double crochet. We're going to go in that fourth and place two double crochets in the one stitch. So we're going to alternate that all the way around. You see we have one, one in the first three, and then two double crochets in the fourth. Okay, here I'm nearing the beginning of the, um, of the round. I did my two, one, 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 and I'm finishing with a two. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet that we did, or that chain two. And just slip stitch. And we're going to do one more row of white before we finish it off for now. So we're going to chain two, and that counts as a double crochet. We're going to put one double crochet in each stitch around in the back loops only. So can kind of see this V we're gonna go into the back loop right there instead of going through both loops we're just doing the back one so instead of instead of going through the two like that we're just gonna go in the back loop and we're gonna repeat that all the way around and slip stitch when we get to the end. Okay, I just completed that row and placed in a slip stitch, and you can kind of see now we have that line going in the back loop only has created kind of like a crease. And we're gonna finish off with our white yarn for now. And we're going to attach our accent color again, or the yellow. And I'm gonna go in and pick any stitch, it really doesn't matter. 
and attach my yarn again by pulling it through and tying a knot. I'm going to go in, pull up a loop, chain two, counts as a double crochet. Okay, this next row I already kind of started, just so you can kind of see what we're doing. We're going to be working in these V stitches, which consist of two double crochets, a chain two space, and another two double crochets in the same stitch. In between the V stitches, we're going to be skipping three double crochets of the previous row. So I did two right here to show you what they look like. And we should have 14 of them at the end of the round. And I just kind of counted my stitches to see if I'm going to get a perfect three in between. I think it ends up over here when I near the end. I'm actually going to have two double crochets instead of three in between. I'm not sure why that is. Probably just miscounted the previous round, but it's not really going to matter in the grand scheme of things so long as you have 14 of these V stitches all the way around. So we're not chaining anything between going from one V stitch to the neck. So I just finished this double crochet and I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to work a double crochet in the fourth um, stitch from this one. So I'm going to skip one, two, three and go into this fourth one and work a double crochet and another one so two double crochets chain two and another two double crochets in the same stitch just like that so we're going to repeat that all the way around this row and when we get over here we're going to slip stitch into the top of this one right here and should have three double crochets in between all of them but like I said at the end here I ended up with two so um, yeah go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. Okay I just completed my 14 V stitches all the way around. And I slip stitch to the, to the uh, beginning. I'm going to finish off and pull that through. I also have this over here that I'm going to fix at the end, and then this here that I have to fix at the end, just with a yarn needle weaving it in. Um, but try not to worry about them for now. But basically what we're going to do is fold that ring over like this. And now we can kind of pick what side we want to be the front and the back. The reason there needs to be 14 is because there needs to be one that goes through each side. So like, you know, if I sandwich it together, it's even because there's an even amount on the other side over here at the corners as well those will be important because that's how we form the sleeve so now from here we're gonna attach our white yarn again and we're gonna be working the same thing for about three rows it's either three or four rows depending on how long you want it I'm just going to go in and pick any one of these top V's, like the top of the V stitches, the, the two chain gaps, pull my yarn through and um, just attach it to my piece by tying a knot. Go in, pull up a loop, chain two. And that counts as our first double crochet because what we're going to do is the same thing as the previous row. But we're not going to work them all the way around. We're only going to work them for the front and back. The sides are slightly different. So here's one double crochet. I'm going to work a V-stitch into this gap. So I'm going to put another double crochet right next to it. A chain two space. And then another two double crochets in the same gap 
and I'm gonna say this is my center. So what I mean by that is when I sandwich this and fold it, basically we're gonna be working a v-stitch in the front, like front and center, the two on the sides, and these, so one, two, this one out, and this one out, are going to just be two double crochets because we're going to attach them to the other side and it's going to create a little sleeve right here, like that. So we're basically pinching these together. So the V-stitch is going to look slightly different, but I just wanted to explain that. It doesn't really matter where you start with this. I kind of like to start in the middle just so I tell myself, like, that's where I'm starting. So we're not going to chain anything going from V-stitch to V-stitch. I'm just going to work another V-stitch right into the top of that next gap. So it kind of took quite the leap. So there's two double crochets, a chain two space, and another two double crochets. So because this is a center, and I have one right here, I'm going to go into the side, so in between. Normally I would jump to this next one here, but I'm actually going to work into this one right here. And all I'm going to do is put two double crochets just right into that gap. I'm going to count, I fold, I'm going to count four. Because when I have this folded, I'm going to jump directly to the other side, so I'm going to sandwich this together. So you see I have one here, one here, one here, and one here. I'm going to skip all of those, act as if, you know, I'm turning it, skipping those four over here, I'm going to directly go into that same gap that I just did on the other side where I just put the two plain double crochets right next to each other. And then in here I'll be working another v-stitch. So I'm going to work a v-stitch and I'm going to show you what we just did just so you kind of see the bigger picture. I know that part can kind of be tricky. And I also have a written pattern available as well on my website if you guys want to see that. So just to show you what we did real quick, try to ignore the straggle pieces. <laughs> There's a ton of them. We have our center. We worked this way. So we did one v-stitch, one v-stitch. Instead of going into the third one, we split the difference in between. We did two double crochets, went to the other side, did two double crochets here, and then continued on our v-stitches. What that did is created a hole right here that we're not going to work into at all because this is our little sleeve. It's kind of like if a doll were to wear the dress, that's where the arm would come out of. So we're basically working from here down. So here I am, I just did the back side. So we started with the center, we went to the side, two double crochets for the sleeve, then I just did this one, the back center, this one, and now we're gonna split the difference, make our next sleeve right here. So just two double crochets right in that gap. We're going to skip four by sandwiching them together. So like these match up, these match up. Twist the work. Two double crochets right here.
like that. So that created another sleeve. And we should just have one more V-stitch right here to do, back on the front side. I mean, it can either be the front or the back side. I just kind of, like I said, I tell myself that's the front, just to put things in perspective. Okay, and now we're just going to slip stitch over here to connect this round together. So I'm going to find that chain 2 and slip stitch. And that is it for the first round of white. Sleeve here, sleeve here, V-stitch, 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 two doubles on the side, same thing on the back, two doubles on the side, V-stitch, V-stitch, V-stitch. So we're basically going to do a whole other two to three more rows, depending on how long you want this to carry down. I usually do three, so we're almost done. I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back here and show you what to do next. And I forgot to mention, to start the next row, because we were kind of in that gap here, I just slip stitch until I get to the center of the top of this next V-stitch, just so I can go ahead and chain, right, um, chain two right off the bat. So the location of the yarn is coming right out of the top V-stitch. So. When you get to the side, so I'm approaching the sleeve, we're not going to put two double crochets in here. We're actually going to work a V-stitch just right in that gap. So here I just did one right here. I'm skipping this, so we have kind of two clusters right here of double crochets. I'm going to just go right into this giant gap right there and work a V-stitch. So it looks like that. So we have our one building off of that. There's one building off of that. One right into that gap. So it kind of goes down on it, like a down angle. And then we're going to just, right from here, go into the next top V-stitch and do that around. And then, of course, we'll do the same thing on this side. Just put a V-stitch right into that gap. Okay, I just finished three rows here of white. And I'm going to finish off the white the same way I always do. Pull that through. Um, now would be a good time to kind of go around and, you know, fix up some of these straggling pieces. So. How I usually do that is, if they're on the inside, I just tie them, trim them, just kind of get some of them out of the way. Where's that coming from? Here. Okay, and now we're just going to do one row of just simple single crochets all around the bottom edge here, because right now it's kind of ripply. So we're just going to go in with our accent color again on the bottom and create kind of a fine line just to finish that piece. So again, I'm just going to tie a knot, go up in that stitch, pull up a loop, and chain one. There's a single crochet, and we're basically just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around and slip stitch when we get back around to here. All right, so that completes the, I guess, the most important part. It's gonna go up there, but I'll show you how to connect that to the towel in part two. But before you go, we have to 
make our button loop. So all we're going to do for our button loop now is just kind of create a little strip of double crochets and it can be as long as you want but I found the longer it is the more it hangs down from the oven or wherever you decide to hang it which might be problematic just because you don't want like every time you open the oven door it might kind of you know the towel kind of flips under there unless you're holding it so um, it's important to keep this somewhat short but you can make it any length you want I like to start off by chaining eh, about 20 or so okay so here's 20 chains it's basically going to be attached to one side like the top of the back of the dress like right there and it's going to come up around to here so this is the length that you're going to want to figure out i usually like to go slightly above um being parallel with the tops of the cuffs like the sleeves you know and to test that you can kind of just stick your button through there and just make sure it slides nice um if it comes out well, let me let me keep going a little bit here and see see what we're working with. So I'll just do a couple more double crochets down the line. Okay. So now you can kind of see like this here would be the button loop, which really is no different from a regular like double crochet. And if you have a button, you can actually make this adjustable by doing that where you can tighten the flap that comes down on the button um, because all of those would be the same so if you have a really big button obviously you're going to want to chain a bunch more skip those amount of chains coming back but I think I'm comfortable with with that I think you can kind of slide oh maybe not I might have to do four I might have to do four chains all right let's back up here yeah it really just depends on the button you're doing so instead of double crocheting into one, two, three, we'll go into the one, two, three, four. We'll go into like the fifth, the fifth chain, like that. So that creates a bigger hole. And I'll just do a couple more double crochets down the line so I can test it. There's lots of different ways you can make buttonholes too. Um, this is just a fast, easy way that I have found works best for me. So you kind of have that strip, and then you have your button loop at the end here. So, see if that goes through there. Might have to do even more. <laughs> And over time, of course, that'll stretch, so if it's a little tight, it's probably better. So I'm comfortable with that. So that was what, four, four chain, a four chain gap, something like that. So just to put that in perspective, I'm going to finish doing my double crochets down the line, and then I'll meet you back here to show you how to connect the button to the top and then connect this strap as well. Okay. I just got done making my little strip and there's a hole over here for the button and I also have the tail end with the end that I just finished off. I'm actually going to use these two ends to attach onto the piece. We're going to find the center. We're going to find the center which is here and kind of have this would be the center double crochet on the white and then we have the two on the sides so i'm gonna go in right of center just like that and i'm going to pull and technically i should come in through this way because we're gonna pull part of the string through so it's gonna lay like that Hope that makes sense so we're just gonna pull in the one strand like that I'm 
So you see that? And then we're going to go into the one next to it, left of center. You don't want to go in the same gap because we can't tie them together then. And pull through. So you see how it's they're next to each other? So on the inside here, we're going to tie these together. And if you don't like this method, if you're not sure this is going to stay, if you're kind of worried that it's going to fall apart and you snag on towels a lot, I recommend maybe sewing this on, making it a little bit more sturdy. But all I do for mine really is just double knot it like that and it, it stays for the most part. Um, I won't do it now, but basically going to weave these ends in along the yellow so you don't see them. But that's basically how you attach this strap here, that button loop. And I like to place my button in the center yellow, kind of where it folds down just like that. So you're going to take your button. I already poked a piece of yarn through. I'm going to go in I'm going to go in here and then also here on the other side. Cause same thing back there. We don't want to um, go in the same hole because then we won't be able to tie a knot. So go in one side, pull one of the button loops through, go in the other side. This is really hard to film and do at the same time. <laughs> and pull in that strand. So very carefully. Let me see the other side, what we have going on back here. Bear with me. Okay, let me fix that. Okay. So this is what it looks like on the inside. We have one strand of the button coming through here and one over here because we're going to tie them together and then it should be um, center on the front of the piece. So I'm going to tie this together. I like to double knot it. And then I just kind of trim those pieces a little shorter. You're not going to see it because it's on the inside. So you can see that it's nice and centered. That way when you bring this down, you can just button that right into place like that. And you can play around with this. You can have two small buttons. You can have a small one here and a big one. And um, you can, like I said, make these adjustable depending on the size of your button. You can use these double crochets to adjust it if you want to pull it down even more. But this is what I'm comfortable with. So that is basically all for this um, part one. But come back for part two and I will teach you how to connect these two together. And we're basically going to be sewing this um, onto our piece.